When you take a look from the head-on perspective, both models are about the same height, but you can see that the CRV has a little bit wider track than does that of the terrain. Obviously being fully redesigned for 2023 is going to make some differences there, but here's the thing. You have a wider and really larger upper grille on the CRV compared to what we have over here on the terrain. Now that really does look typical GMC, so not a bad thing chrome on each one so depending on what you like you have that chrome brow across the top where the headlights are and above the grill and all that good stuff but it is there depending on what your personal preference is a little more chrome over here on the terrain but one of the big differences you're going to see is going to be in the design of the headlight housing we have a vertical look with the headlights and the high beams and then over here will be our blinker housing and kind of a c look of sorts for gmc right only on the right hand side it's backwards on the left hand side but still that same look with the daytime running lights and then you have the daytime running lights and the turn signal housing together up here on the top but everything a lot more slender and then it's not vertical here it's horizontal as far as the headlight design goes still very good looking on both vehicles and obviously the honda has a little bit of an advantage because it's fully redesigned more recently and as far as the side view mirrors go we're going to see body color on both on the mirror caps Now we don't have the turn signal indicator built in here as we do on the honda this is the ex model by the way with the honda but both power adjustable side view mirrors they are manually folding let's see if i can do that over here there we go and you do have a pinstripe here some people might not even know what that is in this day and age i don't know but it's not on the honda that doesn't mean it can't be but something that's interesting here that is the same but it's different at the same time you do have the body color door handles but on the terrain you have the button right here that's passive entry so you can push that on the front and the rear doors and unlock or lock the interior when you have the remote on your person in your pocket wherever you can do the same thing here with the crv with one exception you don't have to push anything you just touch the door handle and you're good to go and as far as the side windows go, we have a very similar design on both until we get back here to the quarter window. You see how everything kind of does this jump up. It angles up and kind of narrows down a little bit, a little bit more chrome here with the longer strip. Again, everything narrowing up here. And then with the chrome strip, it actually kind of bulges out as far as that goes on the honda we have a larger quarter window back here so if you like your large quarter windows well i guess the honda would be the one for you in that case gonna have the rear spoilers on the rear window as far as that goes and the rear roof spoilers both both look pretty nice obviously with the exterior colors that's going to make a big difference in my personal opinion at least with which one looks more sporty neither one concealing away the rear window wiper but not necessarily a bad thing. And based on trim level, well, there are some things that are going to be different back here. As far as the rear door goes, this is a manually operated door, although it is dampened. So when you open it, well, it will just do this. And then it's going to go ahead and raise itself all the way up. But we do have a power rear door here on the terrain. Again, just depending on what's available trim level wise. Now, there is a big difference. Let's close everything back down here so we can see it properly the design of the taillights so a lot of people are saying the design of the taillights on the new crv looks kind of volvo like what do you think about that i don't think it looks bad i don't think it's a bad thing i agree it does look similar to what volvo has not necessarily a bad thing a completely different design here both are led as far as what we have with the terrain everything staying down here on the lower portion instead of working its way up into the pillars up here as we have on the crv but both looking good pretty clean looking back here as you don't have the exhaust sticking out personally i don't think that's a bad thing if that is the case if there are exhaust finishers but they have it cleaned up here on both vehicles you'll also notice a difference in the way the trim works as far as what's above the license plate you'll see that everything actually is a little bit larger here and a little bit more elongated on the crv under the hood of each model is a turbocharged 1.5 liter four cylinder what are the differences in horsepower here with the terrain we're looking at 175 with the crv 
it's going to be 190 horsepower. And there is another big difference here between the two. The CRV has the CVT transmission, the continuously variable single speed transmission, compared to the nine speed automatic here on the terrain. What about the MPGs? Let's see how those compare. 24 city on the terrain, 29 highway, 26 combined, and 3.8 gallons of gas for every 100 miles used. And you will find that on the terrain, you do not have the hood struts to hold things up automatically, help lift the hood, all that kind of stuff. You have to put your manual prop rod in place. But on the CRV, you do have the struts here. Now, MPGs on the CRV. 28 city, 34 highway, 30 combined, 3.3 gallons of gas for every 100 miles driven. How about cargo capacity between the two? Well, there is a big difference here. Now this is the EX for the CRV, so it is a non-hybrid. So that means that you actually have a little more cargo capacity here in the rear. 36.6 to 39.3 to 76.5 cubic feet. And you do that, you can change that because in the non-hybrid version, you have this floor right here that you can actually put in a couple of different positions to change the amount of cargo space that you have. And obviously you can lower those rear seats to maximize cargo capacity. We have the rear lighting here to help out with lighting up the cargo area and a 12 volt power outlet to top things off. And we're looking at 29.6 to 63.3 cubic feet as far as cargo capacity goes here with the terrain. One thing that is different is that while you can lower the rear seats for both models, you can do it from right back here with the terrain. You have to actually go into the interior to do that with the CRV. Not a bad thing necessarily, but just so you know what's there, you don't have a floor that moves, but you do have space underneath the floor. Now there is space underneath the floor here with the CRV. But that's the good thing about this being the non-hybrid version is that you will find a spare tire right here. That makes things a lot better and brings more peace of mind. And what will you find in the rear seating area? We'll start with the CRV. Here is the size of the door bin. It's got a decent amount of space in there. Comfortable armrest. We'll give it the armrest test and see how they compare when we get over to the terrain. And you do have a good amount of space back here. You can see where my legs are. I have a decent amount of headroom and we do have the fold down armrest with the cup holders built in. This particular design for the cup holders is good because your rear seat passengers can have a cup in each holder and still use that as an armrest. Now, we'll take a look at what we have on the rear of the center console, but not much to see there because we only have the air conditioning vents, a little bit of space here that really isn't used for much of anything but there are no USB connectivity options back here or anything along those lines in case you were curious. One thing that will separate things apart, and again, this is really based on trim level and availability in inventory, you do have the sunroof option, or as Honda calls it, a moonroof, here in the CRV, and we're not gonna actually have anything like that over in the terrain, but again, it's based on trim level. A little bit more space when it comes to the door bin section. You have a nice large lower door bin, but also the upper right here, and pretty much the same setup as far as how comfortable the armrest is. And remember what I said about the armrest? Well, here's the difference. If you have a cup holder or the cup holders are occupied by cups, well, you can't use that as an armrest anymore. That just depends on how those are built, where they're located. And we will find the dual air conditioning vents, but also USB connectivity back here. As far as the terrain goes, like I said, no sunroof or moonroof available on this particular model, at least on this trim level. All right, now we're gonna take a look in through the passenger side door into the front seat. Good size again here on the door bin, plenty of space for snacks and a drink. Comfortable armrest there. Now, you don't have a power seat here on this particular side with the EX trim level. I don't know if that's as big of a deal. Both models are going to have pretty much the same size as far as the glove boxes go. So plenty of room in there for your gloves. But something that will be different for sure is going to be the shifter style here. You've got your more conventional and honestly with the way a lot of you talk in the comments section, the more popular style of shifter 
Here's what you have in the way of USB connectivity and a 12 volt power outlet. There is some button functionality. You also have your control here for driving modes, hill start assist and hill descent control. You can turn off the auto stop start feature, parking brake, power parking brake, and brake hold mode. A couple more cup holders right there. And here is the armrest that doubles as the lid for the console. Quite a bit of space down in there. And something else we can compare here. We will have the vanity mirrors built into the sun visors. See how far back this sun visor goes. Pretty far back, should do a great job of blocking things out. And if the driver of the CRV wants to exercise 190 horsepower, here are the old crap handles, one at each door. And looking in again through the passenger side front door, you're gonna find pretty comfortable armrests again, the upper and the lower door bins right there. But just like we saw on the CRV, we're going to have the manually adjustable seats. One thing you will find here in the interior of the terrain you won't find in the CRV is this space right here, cell phone or whatever somebody can get to fit is going to go right there. Like I said earlier, the same basic size in gloveless glove boxes, but here's a big difference. The shifter, it is all push button here. And unlike the Hondas where it's lo located right down here with what you would normally have, it's located up here in this area. We're gonna have connectivity down here in the way of USB and a 12 volt power outlet. And then we're gonna have a few more options here as far as selecting driving mode, hill descent, and all that good stuff is there. Now you do have a little bit higher up lid for the console, which means the armrest as well for the driver and the passenger, and a good bit of space down there. You do have the removable tray if you want to take that out or leave it there. But there is everything that we have, at least from the passenger side perspective, if I can get that back in there, on the GMC terrain. And don't worry, in case anybody was concerned, yes, I did get the tray back in. I was just putting it in backwards earlier. And we'll start off here in the front seat on the driver's side with the CRV. You can take a look around and see how everything looks as far as the dashboard goes and the design of everything that we have here. You will have a digital instrument cluster looks very similar to that of the Honda Civic. And then the steering wheel, everything good and comfortable, easy to use. Here is the infotainment screen. One thing that we wanna take a look at on both models, you do have the multi-view rear view camera right here. Got a couple of different views as far as that goes, depending on what you want to see. And you do have the dual zone climate control here. Heated seats only love to have ventilated seats, especially on a day when it's headed for 80 degrees outside, but a pretty simplistic but yet modern looking interior. And giving fair time to the interior of the terrain, yeah, it looks a little different. It's not as modern looking because it hasn't been redesigned for a few years, but you can see what's here. You can still get plenty of good information here on the dashboard. We'll go through some of that information and show you what is here. There we go. And one thing you don't want to do, don't try and get your tire pressure up to 100. Some people may actually do that. There's 100%, but that's not for the tire pressure. Yes, it's a running joke on the internet right now. I don't know if it really happened or not, but supposedly somebody really tried to do that. And we'll take a look at the rear view camera. Only one view here as far as that goes, but I think it's going to get the job done. It's not a multi-view rear view camera. So a little bit of a difference there between the two. We're going to have our climate control again, dual zone here and you do have your heated only seats also on the terrain, just like we have on the CRV. You can select your mode, driving mode right here, hill descent, and all that good stuff is there as well. Okay, let's start out with the CRV. Have a little bit better angle for the camera here. The ride quality in the CRV is really good. In fact, I noticed a little bit of an improvement from the previous generation to this current newer generation, the first time I drove one of these particular models. Now it does have a little more horsepower than that of the terrain, but one thing that you will find that is a difference here is the way that the power is obviously put to the ground, the way that it responds to the touch of your foot because of the fact that we have a single speed CVT, the continuously variable transmission in this particular case. Not necessarily a bad thing, even though I will say that if I had to choose between the two, I would definitely take the multi-speed transmission from the terrain over the CVT. Even though these CVTs and these CRVs 
are very well behaved. So not really a bad thing necessarily. They, they do pretty well. So some CVTs, well, a little bit more difficult and annoying to deal with than others. So let's get out here and we'll do a little acceleration test, a little, and just see what the difference might be between the two. So we're gonna get on down the road here, get up to the speed limit right there. Hopefully this person ain't gonna pull out in front of us. Thankfully not. Oh, that one did though. Let's see here even though they might not be a problem. Let's just keep going. Easy to drive, easy to see out of, a very enjoyable vehicle for sure. As far as the overall interior space goes, it's very, very nice and spacious here within the interior. You obviously know the numbers as far as the differences go between cargo capacity between the two and some of the things that make maybe one model a little bit easier to deal with than the other in some ways. But one thing that definitely is a difference where the two are concerned is the fact that with the CRV, you have that floor that you can change positions on back there to kind of just make some minor adjustments. It doesn't make a huge difference, but overall, I do enjoy driving these CRVs. I, they drive well, they ride well, they're very responsive, a good tight turning radius, a good vehicle for getting around in the big city. All right take the same test drive route here with the terrain and I will say that the ride quality is very comparable if I had to give it to one or the other well I would say that the CRV maybe is a little bit smoother but not by a lot one thing I will say I noticed here is that I get more engine noise in the interior from the terrain than I do from the CRV but one thing about that to always consider is that when I do these test drives, I keep it as quiet as possible so that you can hear what's going on. So the air conditioning is, you know, the fans turned down, no radio on, none of that kind of stuff. But, so it's kind of hard to really know for sure what it would be like for the average person because they're not going to have it that quiet most likely. But overall, a very enjoyable vehicle to drive. It's just as nimble, it turns just as well. It's another great big city vehicle, just like the CRV. Obviously, the difference we talked about earlier is going to be the transmission. And something that I did forget to mention on both models, pretty simple and basically a standard feature in this day and age, is the fact that you're going to have tilt and telescopically adjustable steering wheels on both. Both are manually, but at the price point where they fall, well, you likely would expect that to be the case. Now, as far as acceleration goes, can I tell a big difference between the two? Not in the respect of how it gets down the road. I mean, there's only a 15 horsepower difference, but the difference is that I can tell that obviously I have a multi-speed transmission here with the Terrain compared to the single-speed CVT with the Honda. As I said, the Honda really, the, the CVTs and these modern-day Hondas as far as the current generation of, say, the Civic or the CRV or whatever the case is, are much better behaved, much more well behaved, if I can say that correctly, than previous generations. So they do very well. But overall, I really, between the two vehicles, interior is comfortable with both, roomy. I don't know. It's just one of those things where the test drives on these car review videos. Well, it's one of those things where I can only give you so much information because you really need to get out and drive it for yourself because you might be used to something I'm not. You might be used to a completely different vehicle compared to what I'm used to and you might find out that you might say, well, you know what Tom said in the video doesn't line up with my personal experience. So that's why I always say, just think about that when you watch these car review videos, especially when it comes to the test drive. So tell me what your thoughts are down in the comments section. How do these two models stack up? Which one do you like more? Maybe there's variations from one to the other. Do you like the terrain more than the CRV or the CRV more than the terrain? Maybe there's some options and features you'd like to mix and match on both. Always curious to know. Got to say a special thanks to my friends at Holmes Honda and Morgan Buick GMC for loaning me both models for the day and a special thanks to all of you for being kind enough to give me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you enjoyed this video and would like to learn about other vehicles you may wish to consider purchasing, check out the video that's on the screen right now and I'll see you there.